You're listening to 94XO. 94XO Podcast. It's Moni XO. I have Bezel Marciano in here today with me. He is promoting his upcoming project, High Frequency Only 2. What's up? That's right. <laughs> I think you nailed it. I think everything is perfect. Like, it's a new project, new experience, so... Here we go. But let's talk about uh, the first high frequency only project that you guys dropped. What almost two years ago now? Yeah, it's a uh, it's been a fresh year and some change, but I definitely think uh, it was good reception from it. Mm-hmm. So, what does high frequency only mean? So it's uh just the music that elevates you, kind of get you past the uh, situation that you're going through, or you can uh, take it as a good high quality sound mm-hmm. and. It's something that kind of elevates you to the next level. Mm-hmm. So we just trying to be the bridge that gets you to the next level. That's it. So when you say that, um, so it's you and it's Bucci, right? You guys are like a, a group or did you guys, um, like how did you guys start collaborating for this project? Good question. So we not actually like a group, like we ain't no boy man or none of that shit. It's, uh-huh. it's kind of like we pretty much developed the sound. We was working together and we d- developed a sound together. So mm-hmm. we kind of like counterparts to something that that's a, that's major okay if, if that makes sense but uh yeah it's no group but it's kind of like we both hold our own weight mm-hmm. and we elevate it so we kind of like all right your sound sound dope with mm-hmm. me so we can go ahead and take advantage of mm-hmm. that so how did the sound come together with you guys though like what what made you guys jump in and be like Oh, sent, yeah, we sound good together. So it was like we sent it through emails, right? It came to the point where we was like, all right, fuck it. We're going to send emails to each other. Mm-hmm. I sent them my songs first because when he seen me, he like, ah, this nigga probably ain't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'm the nigga. I, I do this shit. Like, I literally do this shit. And uh, he just didn't know because the environment we, we was in. And then when he heard it, he was like, ah, he picked up quick. Mm-hmm. Smart thinker. Mm-hmm. My dog picked up quick. He was like, all right, cool. So he's like, I'm, I'm like, let's book a session, you know, come to my home, which is uh, the spot I recorded. Okay. And then I seen what he did. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, ah, oh, yeah, we got some cooking. Like, it ain't perfect right now, but if we keep on doing this shit, mm-hmm. that shit going to turn into something. Facts. And it did. Yeah. Y'all energy on there was different. Like uh, like I was saying before, when I first listened to it, um, the way that you guys put the project together, mm-hmm. it wasn't something that you hear in the club and things like that. Like, it was it was unique. So even when you heard the first song, High Frequency Only, you're like, what the fuck is that be? Yeah. You're not like, what, what is that? And so the uh, production on the album was and, like and then i wanted people to ask questions because i wanted people to think i want people to think yeah. i don't want them to be like all right i get everything right now and i forget it tomorrow mm-hmm. no nah, let me make you think so you can keep that train of thought when you you hear a certain type of song and or frequency like mm-hmm. so that was kind of like the move like i was like all right cool we can do that we can do the street thing we can do the this we we diverse you know we can yeah. do the street or we can do the intellectual property type of thing so i was with that Mm -hmm. and i think it worked so what is your favorite what is your favorite um track off of hfo and Uh, why tell me why off of one i think uh oh it's hard that's a that's a good question (laughs) it's hard i think off hfo one i think uh dreaming Mm Mm-hmm was my favorite one. And the reason why is because it really make me go to this, like it go, I go to this space where I feel like I ain't got no worries. Like yeah. I feel like I ain't got to think about nobody else. I can just control this shit. Like I'm just dreaming, dreaming. <laughs> like it just feel good. It feel real good. So I'm gonna say that's one of my favorites, but my favorites tend to change though, depending on how I'm feeling. How your mood is, yeah. yeah. Cause sometimes I might feel like gold medals. I might feel like dropping like a I might feel like celebrating. So Hey, I c- I can picture you though with the car be blessing you hey, <laughs> blessing your yeah, project. <laughs> yeah me. So it's kinda like it changed up. It it, it differentiates. So it, it's kinda like uh it, it changes. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't know if you can talk uh for Bucci, but how is your creative process just as an individual 
And then if you can talk about maybe your creative process when you guys are together collaborating. So I think for myself, I think that I knew he was, he definitely had a vo voice for it, the mm -hmm. vocals. So I was like, all right, let me see how to fit him into the project. And I know my voice is not necessarily like, even though like I sound like, uh, uh, but when I record my <laughs> shit, be like flat. So he was like the bass of the, Okay. if you have a band, right? Yeah. And you got a guitar, that's the bass player. They got the bass players. Mm -hmm. And then you got the people that do the high shit, like the saxophone. So I was a saxophone mm -hmm. and he was like the bass player, right? Okay. But it both meshed together when you put it together. Mm -hmm. So it was so dope. I was like, all right, cool. Well, look, and naturally I'm a producer. So mm -hmm. most beats I make, you know, and then if I didn't make it, I added something to it. So it was easy for me to see, like, all right, bro, your voice is an instrument to our, our situation. Yeah. And so I was like, bro, let's just get together and link up, and I'm going to book it with my bro, and we going to, like, come to where I'm at because it's high quality. Everything is already high because I've been through them stages where I was in bas mm -hmm. basements and going to her, her and her. Like, so I'm now at the point where, like, I do not pay under $50 for a fucking studio session. Mm. It's disrespectful to them mm. okay. because if you pay under that, you disrespecting the engineer for once and for twice. It's like you want the highest quality for your career, right? Facts. So you got to go out there. I never pay under fifty dollars for a studio. So y'all hear I, that? I, I, I'm Artists. going in. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going but in. see, not for real though. Like I learned that, like, with, even with me you know, doing uh, videography and stuff for mm -hmm. my own podcast, I, I was doing it with my phone. I was doing it like the cheap way, and I kept seeing like the issues I was having. Yeah. So finally, when I start putting that money into it, you see a difference. It's a different respect. It's a different level. Mm -hmm. It's a different everything. Everything is different when you start understanding your your weight you carry. For once. People can't tell you how you want your product, but you know how good they are, so you gotta right. manipulate it and make it make make your voice sound good. So, yeah, I don't pay under fifty for no session. So, mm -hmm. yeah, y'all better listen to that because yeah. I ain't never heard anybody come in here and say that either. Yeah, I don't pay. I, yeah. I'm telling you, I do not. I cannot sacrifice the quality like for like. I don't care if. I, like, well, I, re I really do care about finished product. I'd rather spend two hours on something versus, like, an hour on something that's unfinished. Mm -hmm. So, and pay more, you know? Yeah. Like, so. Yeah, for sure. So, talk about, uh, you guys have High Frequency 2 coming out. Ah, uh, the 2. Yeah, that's coming out real soon. So, the go ahead two. and tell me about, first off, when is it coming out? And then how production has been on that. Okay. So, uh, 325 is the official listening party date so we got a listening party at house of soul the, 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 does that mean everybody invited wait I wait what we I, said you said the day now is everybody invited to I this think every every <laughs> soul if you got a soul you come if you don't got a soul don't come <laughs> fuck it <laughs> but everybody invited we at the house of soul in washington you know where it's at you know uh we come we coming through we gonna perform too so that's what's different than our last hfo one so this not, not okay. our first rodeo okay. you know the first one was an experience and people like enjoyed it mm -hmm. we did the free drink things and we did like the shit was popping like so now too it's a little different we gonna give y'all we gonna give y'all an experience that y'all gonna take home and say like look this is what i wanted to be okay like this is how i mm -hmm. wanted the music to be so we got we're gonna have some live shit going a few surprises in there i don't want to talk about too much mm -hmm. but we definitely gonna have that 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 feel like it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be the craziest uh event i ever thought in my life that's so, exciting so yeah. how was production though on the project though like how were how was it different between your first project and then this one got you so uh with production, you got to understand I'm a producer. So if I didn't produce the beat, I always add something on it. Okay. So it's kind of like I'm always co-producing. Mm -hmm. So either I'm making a beat or I'm co-producing. Like if I ain't making no beats, then I'm I'm adding pianos, I'm adding synths, or I'm bringing somebody in to add it. Mm -hmm. Like we got So Chill on there. We got, uh, who else we got? We got Carter on there, of course, with the guitar. Mm -hmm. We got So Chill with the piano. We got singers that we put on there just randomly like this shit just 
it's just coming in so well that it's scary. It's kind of getting scary now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's hard for me to, like, even kind of categorize our album. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, we just, we picking a way. We, we f figuring out a lane that ain't everybody ever, you know, people ain't ever dive into. And so. if y'all ain't listened to the first project of uh, High Frequency Only, like, I suggest you really do. Because it's hard to explain, like, what we're talking about. Like, we know because we heard it. And so it's the vibe that it has, it, it's like the only way I know how to describe it is unique. Like oh, yeah. You really have to like take the time and sit and listen to every song first Some. through last. Like not, don't skip around, like everything. One through, how many song, tracks was on there again? Seven. One on through seven. Listen to the first to the last one. Because I mean, it's, it's worth it. Like I ain't just saying that. Like I, I've listened to it. Multiple times. I didn't have people say, look, I was cleaning my house up and I was listening to your album. I was uh, going through a situation and I listened to your album. I got people in Paris saying that, damn, I'm out here listening to your album. But so you I'm know, like, you. Damn, like, so how good is the music? I'm saying, if you uh, like, listen to the, or look at the cover art and everything, you like you say with Paris, like, it has that that type of vibe to it's it. It's comfortable. Yeah, they bougie, first off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tell, tell Bougie I said that. Y'all yeah, Bougie. That's <laughs> a good Bougie, though. Now, right. so what are some of the uh, strategic moves that you guys believe uh, plays a part into promoting your music? So, first of all, just to give a, give a little background about uh, what uh, I, I came from. Like, I came from, like, 4300 Gibson, so... I'm no I'm I'm known for like just doing the groundwork and just moving forward like on the ground first. So the pr approach is kind of different. Mm -hmm. So the approach is more like, all right, I do the groundwork first. Once I do the groundwork, I gotta do the phone. So the phone, everybody in my contact, and then just the internet is just reinforcement mm -hmm. to me. That's just reinforcement. That's just reminding people about what are you doing. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Like, and people do, they they mess this up all the time. Mm -hmm. They don't even do the groundwork. I do the groundwork. I pull up on people. I pop out. I know 100 people. If I know 100 people, I'm pulling up on them like, look, we got this event going. Mm -hmm. It's going to be popping. It's going to be the best thing ever. Like, it's going to be this and that. And they believe it, which is true. I mean, because they seen my work. I have a work ethic that shows it. Mm -hmm. So when I pull up on them, and then I show them, like, all right, we got this event going on. It's popping. And then after that, I just got to submit my contacts, mm -hmm. remind them in the contacts. And then I drop a link on IG or run an ad on Facebook and just kind of keep them in the loop. So I feel like you got loyal fans, too. You got oh, loyal yeah. followers. Yeah. 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 I think the and same people hard. that was at one going to be at two. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more, mm -hmm. though. It's going to mm -hmm. be popping. Yeah, so how do you feel, uh, or how important is radio play to you? Uh, radio play, to me, is not extremely important. It's important if you, like, trying to get it, like, a mainstream type of vibe, but I'm J. Cole with it, to me. You know? Ah, okay. Like, so, yeah, I have a song songs on the radio if I got a, a battery in my back or a label pushing me, but mm -hmm. radio label is not the biggest concern to me like because to get it played on the radio all you got to do is do what you have to, to get yeah. it like nah. I, find, I think i find that interesting that you look at it that way because like i think a lot of artists um in st louis i don't know if they've necessarily thought about it but i think the idea of having their song on the radio is cool to them yeah. and so it's just a, i like and don't get me wrong right so I produced, so I had beats that I played, had for records like this on the radio, like with Keem, with Hoops. I had beats that I made for people mm -hmm. that they got on the radio. So, I mean, yeah, it's cool, but at the same time, I just don't feel like... You need it. I don't feel like we fit into the typical St. Louis okay. sound of the radio. But what if it what if it was in L.A.? Like, what if somebody reached out to you and said, I want to play that song on the radio? How would uh, you feel about that? Go and do it. I think you should do it in St. Louis too. Change the vibes up. Like I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I could push for it, but I just think they said on certain things. I don't feel like nobody mm -hmm. really truly made it in St. Louis though. That's that's really how Ooh. I feel. Like even Nelly had to leave. Everybody that made it out of St. Louis had to leave. So yeah, that's yeah. 
So you got to think, with you on, think that. on that level, like, why did they have to leave if you can get it here? So if you can't get it here on the radio or reaching the broad fans, then what did they have hey, to do? Hey, that's interesting. So. That's a question. I think you did something there. I might have to take this little clip and <laughs> <laughs> make this mug go back. <laughs> For real, they have to. They like they literally have to. Man, people that do songs in St. Louis, they fighting for the radio. You trying to fight for a sound versus fighting for your your actual career. Mm-hmm. You fighting for a sound over your career. I don't want to sound like nobody. I don't want my record on the radio. I ain't saying that I don't prefer to be on the radio, but nah, the sound that St. Louis got, it's not worth fighting for it's for me. It's That's not, and it's not just your yeah. type of sound either. Even though I can make them songs, I got songs. There. Yeah, <laughs> you make. I want to hear one now. Yeah. I want to hear one of the uh, twerking songs. I got, <laughs> little, club I got song. a few little. records. I got <laughs> peoples. I got. I got a few records. I got some joints that they, they can go. But I mean, to each his own. And then I got some joints playing in the strip club right now too. That I made beats too. What cool strip club? Onyx. Uh, you name What's it. What's the other one? Bottoms up. I blue stains. I got blue stains playing. Mm-hmm. I got blue stains in my pocket. <laughs> Ask around and I got it. <laughs> and that ain't me vocally, but that's my homie King. But at the same time, I still got, I, I made the beat. So. Oh, so he out here. Yeah. He out here. Yeah, I'm kind of out here a little bit. Mm. Well, I appreciate you coming in, talking about your new project. Uh, go ahead and, like, let them know again when the event is, a listening party. Let them know where they can find you on social media, all of that. For sure. Uh, I go by the name of Bezel Marciano. Bezel. My homie go by the name of Bucci. Bucci. Uh, we got HFO2, listening party, party party. At the House of Soul on 325. That's that's March 25th. Come through. Uh, bring your wife out. Bring your favorite girl out. Whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> bring it out. And then uh, we going up, though. But And you can find me on social media at The District Kid. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Bezel Marciano. And that's everything right there. I got snap, but no snap. Y'all need to, <laughs> y'all need to know his snap. <laughs> All right, we out, VZ. It's your girl, Moni XO, and you just finished watching an episode of 94XO. Make sure you guys hit subscribe and follow me on social media.